Church has always been a vital part of every believer's life. Hello, I'm Pastor Gray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Longview, Texas. Thank you for taking the time to tune in for this service. I'm standing in our auditorium, and here in just a moment, I'm going to take you into this auditorium as we are conducting the services here at 2200 West Loop 281. My heart's desire is that as the Word of God is preached, that God would do something during this service. Again, thank you for being with us. Enjoy the services. I'll be back at the end. God bless you. We're going to the New Testament this morning to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to be reading very familiar passages of Scripture. And uh, Miss Shannon, I just want to say thank you very much for being in church with us this morning. You and the boys. And it's an honor to have you all with us this morning. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> and look at verse number 10. And again, these are very familiar verses. And please don't let the familiarity of what we're about to read disconnect you from the truth that God has for us this morning. It says, finally, brethren, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. Now think about what he just said. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. There always is a confusion about who the enemy is. And Paul wanted to clear up this confusion by the next verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the, all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an, an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We must always remember that the battle that we have is not with anybody around us. There's nobody in this auditorium that you are the enemy. You're not the enemy. You're not what we're fighting against. And if there is a conflict, it's only because of the instigator called the devil. Our fight is against the devil. Our fight is against the system that the devil has set up around us. The devil is a real person. He was named Lucifer before his fall, Isaiah 14, 12. He was in the garden, Ezekiel 28, 13. He was the anointed cherub of God, Ezekiel 28, 14. He was adorned with precious stones, Ezekiel 28, 13. He possessed great musical ability, Ezekiel 28, 13. He was the perfection of wisdom and beauty, Ezekiel 28, 12. He fell through pride, Ezekiel 28, 17. He attempted to steal God's throne, Isaiah 14, 13. He wanted to be like God, Isaiah 14, 14. He possesses intelligence, 2 Corinthians 2, 11 and 11, verse 3. He possesses memory, Matthew Matthew chapter 4 and verse 6. He possesses a will. 2 Timothy 2 26. He possesses desire. Luke 22 31. He possesses pride. 1 Timothy 3 6. He possesses wrath. Revelation 12 12. He possesses great organizational ability. 1 Timothy 4 1. Revelation 2 9 and verse 24. Do not ever forget this one fact. The devil is is real and the devil is smart and the devil is powerful and the devil has an agenda and the devil has made people fall long before you and I ever arrived on the scene. However, no matter what the devil was or is today, 
he cannot possess the inside of a child of God. Take great heart. He cannot possess a child of God. The devil is a created being, therefore he cannot create. The only thing the devil can do is stir up trouble and pervert any good that God creates. The devil likes to take something good and quickly turn it to something evil. The devil hates God. The devil hates God. Oh, know this. He doesn't hate you. He hates God. And because you are made in the image of God, every time you're happy, it reminds him of a happy God. Every time you're victorious, it reminds him that one day God will be victorious over him. You see, you're the image of God. And because you're made in the image of God, that's why to get to God, he wants to get to you. That's the only reason that you are on his radar. You're on his radar because the day you got saved, he lost your soul. Amen on that one. The day you got saved is the day he lost the end. So guess what he's trying to do between now and the final buzzer? He's trying to make God look as bad as he can make him look. And the devil's job has always been the same, and his tactics have always been the same from the beginning. Are you ready? Question God's word. Question God's plan. Get you and I to give in to the lust of our flesh, and that way we can't live in the Garden of Eden. Did you hear that? His plan has always been the same. Get us to doubt God's word. Get us to doubt God's plan. Get you and I to give in to our own lust. And then that garden of Eden that God has for every believer, that peaceful place, that restful place, that place to where we can live and all of a sudden just for a little bit of time we experience heaven. The devil doesn't like it when you laugh. The devil doesn't like it when you love. The devil doesn't like it when you're happy. The devil doesn't like it when you have joy. The devil doesn't like it when you can step over, oppor- step over, step over opportunity. <laughs> Brother Mashburn, I feel so inadequate. I'm going to hide. <laughs> the devil wants us, he doesn't like it when we step over. Would you look at Ephesians chapter 6? There are three things that are found here that it's not the sermon, but it is in, 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 in leading up to the sermon. Jason Moore, I love the grin on your face right now. Mm. Here we go, Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the what, please? Wiles of the devil. Now the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 2, 11 that we are not ignorant of his devices. Let me tell you something. He has used the same tactics all the way down through human history and here's the crazy thing we keep falling for the same tactics down through human history that's crazy you would think we would learn from our forefathers but we keep falling for it so there's the wiles of the devil look at ephesians 6 13 wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that ye may be able to withstand in the what evil day. It did not say sinful day. Let's separate the two. Sinful day is when you walk into a pizza hut or you walk into some place and there's a salad bar and you say to yourself, I'm going to be good today. And then all of a sudden they bring out that Hawaiian pizza. Come on now. With that pineapple and that Canadian bacon and that crust with that cheese running all the way around it and you're sitting there and you're going... I got to be good. I got to be good. I got to be good. Sin is when you walk up and you take a bite and you put it down. Then you take another bite and you put it down. And then you, that's sin. But you know what evil is? Is when you go back up to the counter and order a Hawaiian pizza to take home with you. That's evil. Do you know what the devil wants to happen in our lives? What the devil wants to happen to us is he is not He is not dumb. He's got wiles. He's he's wily. He's conniving. And what he wants you and I to do is he wants you and I to let our guard down to where our sin becomes a way of life. Y'all listen, that's evil. 
Evil is when what we are attracted to, we now go out and buy and we plot and we plan to get it done. The, the devil's smart. If he can get you to give in once, he can get you to give in twice. If he can get you to give in th- once, twice, he can get you to give in three times. And then all of a sudden, he just turns you loose. Yeah. He gets you wound up, and then he sits you down and watches you walk in a... And then guess what he wants you to do? He wants you to reach back and wind your own self up. That's evil. Yeah. But, 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 the, but this is what the devil wants. So how does he get us? What are his tactics? What is he going to use first? Look at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. Look what it says here. Above all. Did y'all see that right there? Above all. I I mean more than the loins girt about with truth. More than the breastplate of righteousness. More than the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. More than the helmet of salvation. More than the sword of the Spirit. What it's saying is not in lieu of. What it's saying, above all. There comes a point when you and I must use our faith. Listen, there comes a point to where we can no longer be victim and be continually victimized by what the devil's trying to do. He's using the same tactics, the same way, and I love it. When God's word says this, above all, take the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. When you think about the shield of faith, you think about it in a defensive position. You think about it, I'm just going to be a good little Christian and hide behind my shield. And hopefully I can weather the darts that the devil listen that's not what it says above all taking the shield of faith wherewithal ye shall be able to what quench some all ladies and gentlemen your faith is meant to be an offensive weapon And your faith is meant to be something you hide behind while you put out the devil's influence in your life. We we, we become these kind of Christians, I'm afraid, that we think we're helpless in this world and we're hopeless in this world. Let me tell you something. The day you trusted Christ is the day you took a measure of faith and you acted on that measure of faith. If that dear lady gets saved this afternoon, it will be because nobody made her get saved, but because she took this faith. This measure of faith that we have as a lost person, the Bible tells us we've got this measure of faith. And once the gospel is presented, we We take that measure of faith and we take and place that measure of faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross and that's when salvation happens. And I'm telling you, dear Christian, the same way you got saved is the same way you live for the Lord Jesus Christ. If the devil couldn't take your soul to hell, then he can't make your life live in hell. You can live for the Lord. That's why he said, man, you got your loins girt about with truth. You got your breastplate of righteousness. Your feet are shod. Your helmet's on. You've got the sword of the Spirit. Now use your faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. The devil is a master at trying to set on fire the things in your life that would destroy you. He's been around. Newsflash, there's nothing new about you he has not seen. I want you to think about that. Nobody has your DNA. Nobody has your exactness. But the devil has seen your forefathers. The devil has seen Adam eat the fruit, broccoli. The devil's seen Eve be deceived. Let's stop hiding behind our faith. And let's start using our faith to step forward. And it doesn't matter how much we're surrounded. 
It doesn't matter how much is landing around you. It doesn't matter. He dips those, that, that fiery dart. He dips that dart in the oil of something about you that would attract you. And then he rears back and he shoots that dart. And guess what? That dart lands close to you and there's something about you that what the devil wants to happen is he wants that dart to set you on a course to where you sin and then that becomes evil and then here's what he does. Do you think he looks at you? He doesn't look at you and go, ha, 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 brother Miller, I got you. No, he looks at God and he says, ha, ha, ha. Can I ask you a question? How quickly would you fight for one of your kids? How quickly would you fight for one of your kids? Deanna was a freshman in college, sophomore in college. She's working for Dr. Einan. And uh, Jordan is just a, a, a grade school still, seventh grade. I'm up here at the gymnasium, and we're holding something up here, and my phone rings. Deanna bought a white Mazda. We, we got a Mazda for her, and we bought that Mazda, and 700 bucks, and it was a good car, just a good car. This was back when cell phones first came out. Remember when you had to pay for minutes? Remember how somebody would call your phone and you would know, don't answer it? And then they'd call back and that was cue to go to a landline and call back because you only had, I mean, am I talking Greek to people? All right. Teenagers are like, I got unlimited data. <laughs> there wasn't a day you had it, amen? <laughs> and uh, and uh, so my, my phone rings and, and it's Deanna. Deanna's on the other end of the phone. And Deanna's like, Dad, he won't get off my tail. Dad, he keeps hitting me with his car. Dad, I don't know what to do. I said, babe, where are you at? Dad, I'm coming down Fairmont. But Dad, I don't know what to do. Dad, I'm trying. And this that voice on the other end. And I said, babe, you keep heading down. You head to the church. Jordan's in the front seat. And that guy's just ramming him. And I said, babe, babe, I'm on my way. I will meet you. You hit Fairmont. And then you hit Gilmer Road. And you get to Gilmer Road. And you get to the loop. I w I'm on my way. I jumped in that gray Buick and I put that thing down and sure enough when I pulled out of the parking lot I could see that car coming around that corner up there and it was almost like it was on two wheels and I said babe pull in pull in the parking lot up here where where Walmart used to be where the Vista College is I said babe pull in the parking lot babe just pull in the parking lot I'm I'm right there and and so she pulls in that parking lot and I pull in there and this this guy's he hits Deanna in the back of that car and his truck stalls for whatever reason. The rage on the inside started rearing up and I jumped out of that car and I'm trying to beat that window in for everything that I have. He's trying to start the car. Deanna's bawling. Jordan's scared half out of his wits and I'm, uh, if I could break that window I would. I'm on 911 and I said you better get somebody here. I'm going to beat this guy half to death. Subsequently, I found out that they record all 911 calls. And <laughs> there is a dispensation given to dads. And it's not my fault I hung around with Deacon's kids all my life that I knew those kind of words. <laughs> Finally, the police came and, and had to really restrain me. I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm like, I'm done. Do you know what the devil hopes happens? That when he gets you and I to mess up, he doesn't look at us. He looks at our father. They go, I got one of your kids. The only difference is this. He can only tempt you. He can only shoot fiery darts around you. He cannot possess you. 
And the greatest news I could give anybody here right now that you're saying, I just can't get it right. I just can't get it right. I don't know what to do. I've tried this and I've tried the six steps. I've tried the 12 steps. Can I tell you something? Take the faith that you had the day you got saved and take that faith and use that faith the same way that God's going to defeat Satan in the end. It's the same thing that you and I can do right now. Take the faith, mount up on top of your salvation, and declare, I'm not a loser, I'm saved, and I'm going forward. A story from the Korean War illustrates this attitude. As an enemy forces advanced, Baker Company was cut off from the rest of their unit. For several hours, no word was heard, even through headquarters, repeatedly try, although headquarters repeatedly tried to communicate with the missing troops. Finally, a faint signal was received. Straining to hear, the corpsman asked, Baker Company, do you read me? This is Baker Company, came the reply. What is your situation? Asked the corpsman. The enemy is to the east of us. The enemy is to the west of us. The enemy is to the north of us. The enemy is to the south of us. Then after a brief pause, the sergeant from Baker Company said with determination, the enemy's not going to get away from us now. <laughs> Can I tell you something? The devil may be all around you, it seems like. But God's in you. When you take the shield of faith... Know this, that you're going to need to use your faith with three types of darts. And once I give you the first one, you'll probably be able to fill in the other two. The first type of dart will be fiery darts about the past. Fiery darts about the past. All of us. All of us. All of us. Did y'all hear that? All of us have a past. Ah, pastor, you know, I'm glad I'm not like... No, no. All of us have a past. Because listen, we were dead in trespasses and sins. You know what the devil loves to do? He was there in your past. So isn't it odd that the most inopportune time that he'll dip in that night. He'll light it up. And then he'll let it go. Have you ever been trying to step out and do something righteous only for a fiery dart to land next to you to remind you of how unworthy you are? I wonder how many singers have gotten ready to sing and, 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 and that and you're not worthy to get up there. I wonder anybody that, that, that loves the Lord and they see such pure words, how, how does anybody get up? But I'm going to tell you, start using your faith. Can I say this with all due respect? Stop wasting sermons. Stop wasting time in the Bible. Do not think that because it didn't apply today that it doesn't apply tomorrow. Because your God is trying to take your faith and he's trying to give you this shield of faith that you can take and use when the devil decides to dip and the devil lights it and sends it and it lands. Use your faith. Would you go with me please to Psalms 103 verse 8? Would you turn there? He wants your past to be set on fire. Your guilt, the shame, the blame. And although you may have relocated, you may have changed your name, you may have not even the same kind of friends, guess what you still have to put up with? The devil who was there. But look at this. Here's my faith. You want to hear my faith? This is on the shield of my faith. Psalms 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Y'all, when the devil shoots a fiery dart and it lands next to you, don't let that get to you. 
If you have already repented of it and you have already asked forgiveness for it and you have already taken care of it, then listen, your God's already forgiven it. But here's the beautiful thing about it. God forgave it back when Jesus Christ died on the cross. You're just now stepping into the forgiveness that has existed for thousands of years. It's Bible. So you know what you do? Don't stand there and take it. Quote it. I don't know if it's convicted as I did when Brother Lawrenson stood up here. How many got convicted? And he just started rattling off verses. How many got convicted? We're not talking about Jesus wept verses. How many got convicted? We're not talking about remember Lot's wife. I'm up to two verses now. We're not the Lord is my shepherd. Can I ask you a question? I'm going to ask it anyways. What verses do you use to quench the fiery darts of the devil? Just because it was so about me when I was a teenager doesn't mean it's me at 55. Just because it used to be me doesn't mean it's me now. And just because it was me yesterday doesn't mean it's me today. And if I have gotten it right and if I have taken care of it, then guess what I do? I just go, okay, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us, and then I quench the fiery darts of the devil. I use my faith. There's the fiery darts about the past. I would encourage you. I could go through a list, but I would encourage memorization so that you don't have to go find the Bible. Is this not what Jesus did? Uh, as it is written. Though he said, but he was the word. <laughs> Memorize. Next thing, fiery darts in the present. Do you know there are things going on right now that the devil wants to make you think that is this where I need to be? Is this what needs to go on? Would you please go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 8. The devil's smart. He, he, he's shooting darts at your past, right? But then he takes the present circumstances you're in and he makes you think, is this even worth it? Look at it. I, I love this. I love this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Don't you love God's word? Man, I love the word of God. Look at 2 Corinthians. And I have it in part, but... Something tells me I need to look at a verse here. Y'all hang on while I study. Okay. Mm. Absolutely. Go back to verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty and not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Are you all with me? Verse number four. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and our servants and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earth and vessel, so vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now hold it. Everything's going great. I'm saved. But then look at verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. You know what the devil wants to do? He wants to take what is going on right now. Troubled, perplexed, persecuted, cast down, and he wants you to lose your joy. You see, for your past, he wants you to live in guilt. Your value is not what is going on to you right now. Your value, if you go back and you'll look at 2 Corinthians, your value is in the verse above it. Man, I, 
Your value's in the, in the verse above it. Look at it. But we have this treasure in what? Earthen vessel. You know what the devil's trying to do? The devil is trying to take your perplexity, the things that are going on around you. You know what he's trying to say? See, your salvation is really not that valuable. Y'all, you're valuable. You know why you're valuable? Because you're saved. You're saved. Like, what's the worst thing that can happen to you? You die? Come on now. Death is a door to be rid of all this junk and to step over here and be free. Now, we don't like it when people die. We don't want people to die. But I'll tell you right now, if you're living in this perplexity, don't, don't let the devil shoot these fiery darts that make you say, well, you're only as good as what you're going through. That's a bunch of junk. I'm just going through stuff. But I'm saved because I have this treasure in earthen vessel. The last one, and then we'll be done. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. You probably already know we talked about the fiery darts of the past. We talked about those fiery darts of the present. And what about the future? Look what it says here. Therefore I say unto you, 625, Matthew 625, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink or what ye, not, nor yet for your body, Matthew 625, what ye shall put on is not life more than meat and the body than raiment, verse 26, Matthew 626, behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are you not much better than them? Which of you by thought can, take, can, add, thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Or, by, or why take ye thought for the morrow? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you? Amen. Take no thought, verse 31, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or where shall we be clothed? Look at this. For after these things did the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Listen, I'm going to let this Bible represent my, my shield of faith. Don't sit in the corner like I've just got to make it till we get to the, to, to the sweet by and by. No, no. If the, if the devil tries to shoot something from your past, you start quoting verses and looking up verses about he has forgiven me. He's cast it from the east, is from the west. Reward me not according to my iniquity. How did you get such a great family with such a wicked past? How did you get a promotion with such dumb stunts back there? I'll tell you how. God. And that's why you just step out and you just go, I'm going to take my faith and I'm going to squash that fiery dart. Because that's not true. And then when you get in situations right now, say, I don't even know what we're going to do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. We're going we're gonna to focus on this joy that we have about salvation. Because what I'm going through doesn't mean that's who I am. And when it's like, well, how are we going to pay that? And how are we going to get that done? You just simply said, he's taking care of me to this point. He'll take care of me the rest of the way. Y'all, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The devil's real. But the devil's not bigger than your faith. He's not. He's not. And I, there's victory. There, there, and, and, and I hate to sound like an optimist. A preacher told me Thursday night, I was preaching south of here and Thursday night on the elevator, stepped off. This preacher looked him out and he said, Bob, you'll get more haters for having mercy than you will anything else. Wow. He said, and Bob, you'll get more haters for preaching about the love of God and the fact we're victors. Y'all right. listen to me. We are victors. Yeah. Did y'all hear that? Your faith that saved you is the faith that can sustain you. Use that faith. Use that shield of faith that when the devil starts shooting these darts. Now, all of us know the difference between conviction. If God's convicting you, get it right. But I'll tell you this much. We serve such a great God. Thank you for taking the time to view our services. I trust that the sermon, the message, the truth was a blessing to you. My number's at the bottom of the screen. If I can do anything for you or Emmanuel Baptist could be a blessing to you or yours, please reach out to me, let me know. I also would like to know 
what God has done in your heart. I would love to rejoice with you. I would love to pray with you. I would love to add your prayer request to our Wednesday night prayer bulletin. So if you want to, number's at the bottom of the screen. Text me, let me know. God bless you, and I trust that the Lord will bless your day. Join us again for another broadcast here at Emmanuel Baptist Church.